What's the word, y'all? NBA opening night could not have been any better. It's like the universe knew that today was the day. We got two good games, in my opinion, but we also got a lot of stuff that happened off the court that's worth talking about, like Ben Simmons getting kicked out of practice and subsequently suspended from the 76ers. Then we saw Marvin Bagley completely kicked out of the rotation of the Sacramento Kings and his agency coming out and dropping a statement talking about this as a case study of, of bad management. and just, ah, it's a lot of stuff going on. And then we waited a couple hours and then we got games. And I'm here to talk about all of that. A couple housekeeping things. Um, for the beginning, at least, of the 2021-22 season, I want to start dropping these videos early in the morning. Now, I'm recording this. Steph Curry is being interviewed right now. Apparently, this is his first triple doubles in 2016. So, I'm recording this fresh off the game, so it's in my mind. But I won't publish them super late at night anymore. We're going to do it in the morning. We'll see how y'all like that, and we'll adjust accordingly. But think of us as, like, the NBA version of Good Mythical Morning, but not as early and not every day guaranteed. You understand? Okay, cool. I actually want to talk about the games first, and then we'll talk about the things outside of the games because I think that's what y'all are here for. So let's start off with game number one. We saw the Milwaukee Bucks going against the Brooklyn Nets, and I am here to overreact to everything. Um, I like how we watch one game of the NBA season and we already have our opinions about certain teams because we've been voided of, of like real, real basketball that's worth anything. So this is our only sample size, so let's take it as that. Giannis, like I said yesterday, is the MVP of the league. That boy was un stoppable as confident as ever playing both sides of the floor but y'all already knew that because you've been watching these videos the Brooklyn Nets were missing a few things it looked like those boys were tired but even with that said it felt like they were able to flip a switch and they really needed to and drop the lead down to like five but defensively them boys was not getting back on defense and there were an extreme extreme amount of defensive miscommunications where like something would happen on the Bucks offense and then Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge looking at each other like I, I, I don't know. Some of those things will get better, but we did see this team struggle from the defensive side of the ball in the regular season last year, so some of the things might not completely get figured out, but I do think there's going to be a learning curve because they do have new players getting into the locker room, and even when they were together, they were very good. But it was cool to see Giannis and Kevin Durant go head-to-head, -head, man. I, I think all of the star players that we saw today had a good game. Like, Steph Curry didn't have a good shooting game, but like I just mentioned he had his first triple-double of, of, in the last five years um so he had a win i guess all of the big players that we know and love that we wanted to see have good performances did that kevin Durant offensively was was crazy um he had a stretch i think it was in either in the third quarter in the fourth quarter where it felt like he was unstoppable and it, Giannis literally was unstoppable he was doing everything there is a moment in the fourth quarter where Giannis got pulled out of the game with like six minutes to go the crowd gave him a standing ovation because they were by 15 or 20 at this point and the world just thought okay Giannis is sitting and then like two minutes later coach bub put him back into the game and I was like, I don't like this. These are bad vibes for me. I've been here when saw my superstar player go into a game when it was already over. And in this beginning of the season, no, he's good. So he put it back into the game for like two more minutes then brought him out again. It was a very, very weird thing. I hope that Drew Holiday is okay because he started off really, really good. And I placed um, some things on his over. And him going out with injury kind of screwed up my, my yeah, digs. But hey, I hope he is completely okay. But there are some star players that we want to shine the light on outside of Giannis because um, I told myself in a video from in my main channel like maybe two weeks ago that when Jordan dang I had it Jordan Wara Jordan Wara I gotta google it again because at this point I said specifically in my video if Jordan Wara hits three three-pointers in a regular season game I will learn his name and get it down pat and here I am coming into the show going back on my word let me google it one more time everybody knew that Jordan um Wara 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 it's not as hard as I'm making it I just see two consonants next to each other in the N and the W, and my brain doesn't recognize that. You know, the dyslexia. I'm always going to go back to that. It's the dyslexia. Um, we saw in his rookie season that he was able to score the ball. It was all the outside things that we worried about, and he showed a lot of those too. Um, and if he's a quality NBA player for them, that's great. I mean, I didn't really realize how many players are going to be injured from pretty much every team that played today was dealing with a, a good amount of injuries. So we saw Jordan Norris step up huge, and he's going to be a good rotational player for them the entire season, I believe. We we also saw Thanasis onto the Kumpo get minutes. It's something I didn't expect for day number one. But again, they're dealing with injuries. Justin Robinson had to play a couple minutes because that's when Drew Holiday went down. So it was really Jordan Wara. Wara. I'm, next episode, I, I promise I'm not going to mess it up. And though Grayson Allen shot 3 for 10, I promise you he was way more impactful to the game than his 3 for 10. I guess he had, he had 6 assists and four, 4 rebounds, 2 steals. And that was one of the reasons why they extended him. They saw him. His... Uh, his 
ability to not think and just shoot the ball, that could go a very long way for a team that's like the Bucks. You have so many dribble penetration guys, and now you got an open corner three at this and that. If this, I saw somebody on Twitter that say if if he shot his season average um, today, and it was one of the player, a uh, Pat Connaughton, if they both shot their season average, this game would have been way over it way earlier, um, and it ended up being kind of a blowout. We were doing a show on our on our podcast channel so i pretty much had to listen to the first quarter of the game instead of watching it when i got home it was like 25 though 21 to 7 i was like yeah this is probably reps even though they have james harden and kevin Durant, i don't see the bucks giving up on the lead like that now we talked about how the bucks needed um better defense they weren't get back on defense a lot of defensive miscommunications um for part of it and, and he got better throughout the game nicholas claxton felt like he could not play against the bucks um and i'm sure that's going to change. If they're going to see each other in the playoffs, Nicholas Claxton has to be a player that can play because of his size, right? They needed the upgrade on defense. And as crazy as it is to say for a team that has Kevin Durant and James Harden, they needed more shot creation. Do you get what I'm, do you know what I'm getting at? They need Kyrie Irving. They need Kyrie Irving. They need Kyrie Irving. I believe that this team could be a competent, good, championship quality team without Kyrie, but to put them over the top in the matchups like this, where James wasn't as aggressive as you want him to be, and Kevin Durant can't score everything, a guy like Kyrie Irving is a great guy to have. 50, 40, 90, 27 points per. They need him back. Um, they need James, they need James Harden or Kevin Durant to do the crying in the um in the parking lot, calling him, like, bro, please get the come on, we need you. We need you. Not super overreacting, though. Um, but I don't think the Brooklyn Nets have won in Milwaukee in the last seven games or so. So, a little kryptonite right there. That crowd was incredible. Good ring ceremony. The warm-up jackets with the gold and the white was, was dope. The rings are dope. The banner going up. It was amazing night. I didn't expect them to actually win because I thought there was going to be some championship overlay with the banner and then the championship ring ceremony. I thought they was going to come out lax day school. They did exactly the opposite of that. Shout out to the Bucks. And just a reminder for people and for newer guys, uh, when I do these recap type videos, there's no script. There's no anything. I'm just talking about the things that I saw that's on my mind. And typically when I get to the edit part process, I'm like, dang, I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to say this. Follow me on Twitter, though, because I do be live tweeting these games. Let's transition to the second game of the day. We are in the Staples Centers for the Warriors versus the Lakers. A couple hours before, I saw Chris Haynes tweet. I don't know if he was the first one to have it, but the starting lineups, I saw Russell Westbrook, Kent Bazemore, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and DeAndre Jordan, and I was disappointed. I was extremely disappointed. I, I realized that Wayne Ellington was injured, um, and, and they just need more shooting in that lineup. And the fact that Anthony Davis didn't want to start at center. Now, he did play a ton of center today, so I'm not going to fault him for that. And he played amazingly today. He ended up playing a ton of center. But the fact that he still needs a center to start alongside him, whether they're playing 12 minutes like DeAndre Jordan did or the 12 minutes that Dwight Howard got, it's just like, oh, like, okay, they started off pretty solid. Anthony Davis could not miss. LeBron James, I think, started off 7-for-7, seven 6-for-6. Seven, six six. They looked really good, but... DeAndre Jordan got the first pass of the game and didn't do anything else for the entire game. Kim Bazemore ended up with eight points, but I feel like he had one total shot the entire game. And, and talk about overreactions. Um, to, uh, on tre Trending on Twitter right now is Russell Westbrook. Final stat line for Russell Westbrook was um, three points, five assists. No, I'm sorry. Eight points, four assists, five rebounds. I was looking at Rondo's stat line, which they, they might as well be the same thing. Um, not great. He shot 4 for 13 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. Did not get to the line one time. Um, not not one to super overreact, but this was a, a bad start. And at the halftime show, Charles Barkley was trying to put it in pers perspective for people at home. Now, when you're joining a team um, like the Lakers that already have championship pedigree, and now you're coming in and being the third fiddle, it can take some time to really adjust to being that third guy. And I do believe we saw some of that today with Russell Westbrook. I'm not expecting him to average 8, 5, and 4 for the entire season. Um, but they, they're going to need him to step it up because their top two guys look like top two guys. LeBron showcased to the world that I'm still one of the best players in the league. Anthony Davis is trying to get rid of that mantra around him. Um, Charles Barkley, before the game even started, called him um, street clothes. You know, and everybody knows that he's banged up every single game. Last year was a down year for him. He's got called soft, I've heard a lot. And he came out and he was guns blazing. The only thing about him that I can really, really criticize today is he didn't hit his free throws, which is not Anthony Davis. Like, shooting 2% for 80 from the free throw line is something I don't know if I've ever seen before. But the rest of the team, outside of AD and outside LeBron, look bunts. And even with that being said, they were still in this game until the very end. But nobody else showed an impact other than AD. 
Avery Bradley, who sat on the bench for three and a half quarters, played the last eight minutes, and basically was the third best player on the team today in his eight minutes played. Now, I know for every single team, because even when I go back to the first game, Bruce Brown didn't play into garbage minutes. You're going to see for the first week or two for every single team out there, coaches are playing around with rotations trying to figure some things out. So, yes, Avery Bradley got picked up yesterday and immediately came to L.A. Um, I would expect him in game number two to play more than eight minutes because he showcased, hey, I can still defend because he had some moments on Steph Curry in that eight minutes where he was looking really solid. And I can still hit some shots. They needed somebody to do it because it was just him. Rondo hit one. Melo hit two. Malik Big Monk hit too, but it, it felt like it was just it was just weird out there, man. They got a lot to figure out, but luckily for them, it is a long season, and they have the pedigree of of leadership and stardom to to weather the storm and look. So I'm pretty sure they're gonna be better. But I would have told people to bet against the Lakers today because LeBron James has not won an open and night game since 2017. That is a fact. So I would have told people to bet against them. Um, and the Warriors. Let's talk about them because they won this game. Um, Steph Curry shot five for 21. And they won this game. That's insane. I don't know if that's credited to them or that's, you know, a knock on the on the Lakers for not being able to capitalize with Steph Curry having a bad game. Jordan Poole came into that third quarter. It was the early fourth quarter. And I made the corny joke of the, it was a pool party and the Lakers were invited. He's a microwave guy. He didn't start off that hot, but he had a period in the game where he was doing his thing. There was also a period in this game. With the Warriors were like waiting to bring Steph and Draymond in, and they had all bench players. And the Lakers were practically out there with the starters. Braun, AD, Russell Westbrook on the court. And the Lakers could not take advantage in the fact that Steph Curry and Draymond Green, their two most impactful players, were not on the court. That's a bad sign, but it's also a good thing for the Warriors because last year they were about a league average offensive team. But when you watch the Warriors play, when they're working at a like a, a well-oiled machine, there's no better basketball in the league. And I just cannot wait for Klay Thompson to be back. Nemanja Bjelica is a guy that when he was signed, I was like, that's a good pickup if he can give you anything. Because the last time, last memory I have of Nemanja Bjelica is him being on the Heat and him not being able to even hit the rotation on the Heat who traded for him. Right? Was it the Heat? Let me, let me double check. I'm pretty sure it was the Heat. <laughs> Survey says it was the Heat. They traded for him from the Kings. And he basically didn't hit the rotation for the second half of the season. And if I'm not mistaken, once playoffs came around, he wasn't getting any PT. Um, do, 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 do. Last year, yeah. Um, he, was, he was, yeah. He was getting like 15 per. So um, when they signed him, I was like, that could be a good sign. And depending on which version of you, he, or which version of him you get. And he was amazing. 15 points, 11 rebounds. And what I, I didn't really realize in the first couple of years in Omani Bialic's career is how good of a playmaker he was. He was running the Draymond Green role when Draymond Green was on the bench. I'm like, whoa. Is that, is that what we about to get off the bench for him? I don't pour him to have a good game, but defensively, you know, you, you ask him to guard LeBron from spurts, and though LeBron had a great game, I think Otto Porter did a solid job guarding him. Juan Toscano Anderson doing some crazy stuff, you know, playing hustle plays. And the best thing about this for the Warriors, at least, they won this game where their best shooters did not shoot the ball well. 25% from three from Stephen Curry. 36%, you'll take 36% from Jordan Poole, but on 11 attempts, um, who else? Who else? Uh, Damian Lee, one for five. These are players that they're expected to be 38, 39, 40% three-point shooters. And they didn't hit that today, but they still ended up winning the game. Kevon Looney, I took the over on his points. He had that joint in the first quarter. I don't think he scored since then. <laughs> I don't think he scored since then. So uh, maybe I underrated what the Warriors could be this season. Um, I just didn't believe that a lot of people would be able to learn this offense. P pretty similar to last year where, where they, they uh, started off struggling. They had so many young players coming in and players that have never run the system. And though they do have a lot of new players on the team, they still have people like Steph, like Jordan Poole, who's been here, Kevon Looney. Basically, their starting uh, starting five have been there for at least a season and they know the offense. And then off the bench, Iggy is back. Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Lee. These are players that have been in the system for the last couple years and they're starting to learn it. And boy, it is Beautiful in this working because there's not a selfish player on the team. Yes, Jordan Poole is like a shock chucker type dude, but he's willing to make the extra pass when you need him to. And it's amazing. Um, and those two games, man, though they weren't like down to the wire, buzzer beater games, they were fun for me. And maybe it's just because I haven't seen basketball. If we had the same slate of games in December and both of these games ended up the same way, maybe I wouldn't be as optimistic or excited about it. 
But it was the first games of the season. Man, it's great. So instead of talking about Ben Simmons, um, because I'm tired of talking about Ben Simmons and the 76ers, I want to talk about the Marvin Bagley thing because they kind of came out of nowhere for me. Um, and he is not in the rotation. They Like he was told by whether it be Luke Walton or ownership, management, that he will not be in the rotation to start the season. And I think that is extremely, extremely wild. And listen, I'm not saying that Marvin Bagley is a guy that deserves 35 minutes but when you look at what they have on that team, I just kind of assumed that he was going to come off the bench like he had been um, and at least get some type of minutes. And it didn't. It, they're just saying he's not getting any. And listen, I would be lying to you if I told you that I was watching a significant amount of Sacramento Kings game last year. But he did. Oh, I'm sorry. He started every almost every game that he played last year, which is 42 games. 14 points per he basically has put up the same statistics the entirety of his career he's has injuries here and there so he never plays over 50 percent of the season um but for him to be completely out of the rotation is kind of weird let me read this to you sacramento has informed marvin bagley he is not in the open and night rotation which is completely baffling it's clear they have no plan for him in the future and yet passed on potential deals at last year's deadline and this summer based on value and said they chose to bring him back but not play him a move completely contradictory to their value argument. In this case study in management, oh, this is a case study in management by the Kings organization. That's from Jeff Schwartz. And listen, I even tweeted after this came out, the fact that he's not in the rotation is wild to me. And I saw some diehard Sacramento Kings fans, the people that I trust, the people who watch them every single night, saying it's not that wild. Um, and they, they proceeded to list off players that are better than him, nine players that are better than him. Um, but even if that is the case, if, if if this is if what Jeff Schwartz is saying right here, that they passed up on deals based on value on the deadline in this summer based on value to bring a player back and not allow him to play does nothing but negatively impact his value, negatively impact his value. There's no team that was willing to give you two solid players from Marvin Bagley three months ago. See the fact that he's not even in a rotation and be willing to give you those same quality players. It's not going to happen. So, I listen, I'm not saying I'm pro Marvin Bagley because I don't know what the heck he's going to be in his career. But him not being in a rotation on a team like this is, again, you understand. So, what is next for him? Um, Well, now that he doesn't have much trade value, the only thing I can see happening, here's my trade prediction. I think I may have saw this on Twitter, so it's not like I came up with it myself. Um, It was the Marvin Bagley for Thaddeus Young trade once Thaddeus Young is able to get traded. Um, the Kings are trying to make a push for the playoffs. Thaddeus Young was basically the Bulls' second to third best player for a lot of last season. That's a fact. Um, and I don't know if he's going to replicate that this year. But if that is the type of player you're getting, the Sacramento Kings can use that. And the Spurs are in the rebuild mode, so why not take a flyer on a dude who is going to hit restricted free agency, but based on what he's done so far, he's not going to get that many offers. He's not going to be trying to get the DeAndre Aiden money. So take a shot on the dude for a guy that you probably don't even want on your team anyway. Do I expect each one of these videos to be this long? Realistically speaking, probably. Because <laughs> look, tomorrow's slate of games, though, we got like 10 games. And though, obviously, I can't watch all of the 10 games, I'm going to have to cherry pick which ones I do, do watch and talk about all of those. I'm sorry, 11 games tomorrow. Man, man, man. I cannot explain. Bulls basketball is back. So that's a W. What is my favorite game of the day tomorrow? Oh my God, ESPN has Nuggets versus Suns. That is a must watch. And it's, yeah, it's on national TV. Celtics versus Knicks should be good too. And my sleeper from best game of the day, my sleeper is going to be um, uh, Rockets versus Timberwolves. A bunch of fun players in those two organizations. So them going against each other should be fun. So let me know in the comment section, what is your opinion slash overreactions from day one? We're not going to fault you if you overreact, dog. Everybody knows it's day number one, and we just out here getting our feelings a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be reading those comment sections, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.